Um, and welcome to the web briefing for NASA's new Leveraging State Investments in Creative Aging Direct Grant Program. My name is Susan Auten. I'm NASA's Arts Learning Projects Director. Before we begin, I just want to let you all know that we are recording today's web briefing, so just know that. And I'd also like to adapt a practice shared with me by NASA's Learning Services Director, Eric Giles. And I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining today's webinar from the traditional and current lands of the Lenny Lenape people in Brooklyn, New York. And if you would like to join me in conveying respect and appreciation for the original people, places, and cultures of our country by posting in the chat the name of the First Nations people whose land you are joining from, please do feel welcome to do so. Let's also acknowledge and pay respect to the people who were taken from their ancestral lands in Africa and enslaved in order to build the economic infrastructure from which our country now benefits. And lastly, let us remember the ways that our own specific ancestors arrived in this country and how their stories, hopes, and dreams are still very much ours to carry forward. So my hope for today's web briefing is that all of you who have joined today will come away from our time together feeling clear about all the basic and preliminary program details so that you can proceed with confident and concrete next steps in designing your grant proposals. I'm going to go ahead and step us through important features of our grant guidelines. Um, I'll share an agenda in just a moment. And then I'm going to leave plenty of time for a more freeform Q&A session after I run through the, the basics. Along the way, why don't we go ahead and use the chat function if you have questions to please post your questions in the chat as we go through um, so that when we start the Q&A session, we can circle back to what you've already posted in the chat and make sure that we collect and gather and answer all of the questions that have come up along the way. After that, we'll see where the conversation leads. Um, so thank you, Eric um, Giles, for being here and for admitting folks who are in the waiting room. I appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and um, share the agenda. And get going. So we're going to just run through a quick uh, overview of the background and purpose of, of our grant, um, the approach that we're taking to creative aging in our grant, the timeline, award amounts and allowable expenses, application components, criteria for adjudication, payment dispersal and reporting requirements, additional support, and then we'll get to questions. And to let you all know, all of this information and more does appear in the um, grant guidelines. So you'll have that, if you have that with you, be able to follow along um, as we go as well. All right. So as you all are well aware, um, state arts agencies do have a public mandate to make the social, education, economic, and health benefits of the arts available to all residents, especially underserved populations. And you're in a position to help facilitate creative aging programs that enhance the artistry, well-being, and social connections of older adults. Through a combination of the direct grant funds that we'll talk about today and professional development programs, this initiative will help state arts agencies meet the needs of their older adult populations and build state level capacity to advance creative aging. This initiative is made possible by a partnership with Aroha Philanthropies. And I'm really pleased to remind everybody that starting in 2018, NASA and Aroha Philanthropies have collaborated to raise awareness about creative aging, conduct research on creative aging, and activities in state arts agencies, and also consult state arts agencies about the opportunities that you all see to grow this issue area. Um, and this leveraging state investments in creative aging um, program is indeed an outgrowth of the work that um, the collaboration that NASA 
and Aroha have been um, doing for the last couple of years. Oops. So in terms of the approach um, that we are taking to creative aging, in partnership with Aroha Philanthropies, there are some best practices that NASA wants to place an emphasis on and lift up for your consideration. We want to place emphasis on programs or partnerships that equip artists, arts organizations, and other service providers to help older adults develop their artistic skills and creative techniques through sequential arts instruction. Um, deepen older adults' community and social engagement. And if activities in, in your grant proposals are um, designed to employ teaching artists, that teaching artists are trained in the design and delivery of arts programs that are tailored to the needs of specific needs of older adults. So I'm noting here that on, in our guidelines, pages two to three and page five, outline more in detail what these creative aging best practices are and offer resources to help you get a grounding if you're not already familiar with what those best practices of creative, creative aging are. I'm also noting at the bottom left hand of of our slides today, where you can find this information in the guidelines and also FAQs. Just a quick overview of our timeline. It's very straightforward. Um, applications were opened on Monday, October 26th. The deadline for uh, submitting your application materials is Friday, December 18th, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be notifying of awards by Monday, February 22nd, 2021. The implementation period for activities begins Monday, March 1st, 2021. And the implementation period ends Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. So that's fully a year and a half for grant activity implementation. Um, and then final report deadline would be Friday, September 30th, 2022. Award amounts and allowable activities. Um, so we are really honored and excited to be able to provide up to 25 grants at the $20,000 tier and up to 16 grants at the $60,000 tier. And as you'll note in the grant guidelines, the difference between those two, the $60,000 tier are, um, the opportunity is geared for state arts agencies who already are um, actively putting forth creative aging efforts in your state or have um, a population or a geographic um, consideration that would make sort of a bigger grant more um, the $60,000 would be more um, helpful for. $20,000, we're really thinking about seeding new initiatives, brand new. So um, there's some interplay there, and I'm always available for you to ask questions, which is the right tier. I've been hearing from people already. Keep your questions coming about which tier. It is an either or. So you're either going to apply at the $20,000 tier or at the $60,000 tier, not both. These are non-matching grants, so there's no, no matching required on, on state arts agency side. Allowable activities, there, we anticipate that there will be an exciting range of activities that you'll propose and carry out. But the basic gist is that um, we will be, we, we would like there uh, to see that the primary beneficiaries of project activities are older adults. Um, as I mentioned before, funds can be used for new programs or existing programs. Funded activities should lead to sequential skill-based activities that include intentional, meaningful community or social engagement for older adults. So those are the creative aging best practices. And as far as the actual activities, they, they could include direct service that state arts agencies are providing for older, older adults, including virtual or online programming. Um, they could be activities that develop the capacity of partners or local providers 
who are providing direct service. They could be activities that support teaching artist training, partnership development in various ways, and many more ideas that I'm sure are already percolating for you. So this is not an exhaustive list, but these are um, all very much allowable activities. And again, you'll find what's allowable and what, what is not allowable, guidelines pages three to five, and more in our FAQs document pages one to two. Um, our application components are pretty straightforward. There are three PDFs that when all is said and done, you will upload and send to this email address, creativeaging at nasa-arts.org by December 18th. And those three PDFs are as follows. A project details form, contact information, um, names, email addresses, titles, that sort of thing. A project narrative document, which will be essentially a, a Word document that you'll create answering the, the narrative questions that are provided in, in the guidelines and save as a PDF. And then thirdly, the project budget form, which is a downloadable form um, that you'll find on NASA's website that will help guide you through thinking about the budget in a, in a pretty straightforward and simple way. So all of those forms, the, the details form, the budget form, and instructions about how to complete a narrative document, you can find at this address at nasa-arts.org, NASA Research Creative Aging, and the password in case you all have not contacted me to receive that yet, um, it is a password protected site, is capital C, lowercase r, 21, capital A, G. This is all available on NASA's website. Um, you can contact me directly for this information if you need it. And we can again go through this when we get to our Q&A session at the end. But these three forms are really the only things that you'll need to submit. There's no need to submit additional supportive materials. Um, it's just these three documents that you'll want to upload and send via email to creativeaging at nasa-arts.org. The criteria, um, this is all outlined in detail in the guidelines pages eight to nine, but just to sort of give you the 30,000 foot view, there are four criteria that um, applications will be adjudicated according to. Creative aging opportunity, um, which is 35 points, the quality of your program design, 35 points, community inclusion, 15 points, and the feasibility of your project, which is 15 points. So you can see that the sort of big picture creative op aging opportunity in your state and the quality of your program design, meaning how those creative aging best practices are really layered into your program design are really where the weight of the, of the scoring points will come from. I'm happy to answer more specific questions if we, if we get there in our Q&A session, but this is really just big picture. And again, you'll find more detail in the guidelines, pages eight to nine, and our FAQs also have a little bit more granular detail about um, the criteria as well. Payment dispersal and re reporting requirements. So um, first and foremost, we do, expect that state arts agencies will be the lead applicant. Um, our grant guidelines use, use the language grantee of record. And we can get into that a little bit more specifically, but what, what that means is that state arts agencies need to be the primary decision maker and sort of programmatic decision maker in this project if you're going to be working with some sort of fiscal agent or have a fiscal receivership relationship. Um, and the sort of grant activities, the activities that will be undertaken really do need to be about building the state arts agency's capacity in creative aging. If there's a situation where you know that you'll, your agency will need to or choose to work with some sort of fiscal agent as a partner in this, 
we can absolutely speak one-on-one -on -one to figure out the details of that. That might be for reasons of efficiency or um, there are statutory reasons. NASA is well aware that that might be the case and we can work with you to figure out what it will mean for you to, sub to submit an application in, for this program um, as the lead applicant, but with a, a partner in the more formal role of actually receiving the funds. I'm gonna leave that there because I feel like there might be more questions that we can dive into more deeply a little later on, and I wanna leave time for that. But um, what will apply to everyone who receives the, uh, an award is that 80% of the grant will be dispersed upon receiving um, a signed letter of agreement, your invoice, and a W-9. So right up front, 80% of the grant award will go to awardees. 20%, the final amount of the award, will be dispersed upon receiving the final project report, which we would like to have um, received 30 days after completion of activities, but no later than September 30th, 2022. Uh, reporting requirements do um, include a brief progress report that we'll want to see at the project midpoint and that participating in this project um, does require uh, participating in an independent evaluation that we will have more information about as we um, go forward. More information can be found on the guidelines pages 10 to 11 and FAQs page two. And again, we'll have more time today to talk about this and I'm available one-on-one -on -one, um, for further conversation if you have questions about this part. That brings us to questions. And before I um, stop sharing my screen, let me go ahead and just remind you that the grant guidelines can be found um, on the NASA website at this address and the guidelines uh, also, I'm sorry, the guideline FAQs are also available. My direct email is susan.auchin at nasa-arts.org. And again, I am here and at your service um, for any one-on-one -on -one guidance or, and or for you to participate in our upcoming office hours, um, which will happen on Mondays. Um, over the next month. So let me, um, I'll sh stop sharing my screen here. And I see that we do have a lot of chat happening. So, fantastic. I'm seeing folks sharing where they're calling from, which is greatly appreciated and interesting. But so far, not too many questions. No questions so far. Oh, Jamie, I see a question from Jamie Dunlop. Is this a one-time opportunity? Yes, it is. There's one grant program, one, one grant timeline. Um, so it's the, the actual implementation period is pretty much 18 months, but there's just one application round. So yes, a one-time opportunity. Karen um, in Wisconsin is asking regarding the recommendations decision-making, how will the panelists be chosen, and what experience will they be expected to bring, and will they be from around the country? Um, yes, our, our adjudicators will be selected from around the country. They will have experience both in state arts agency practices and programs and governance, as well as creative aging, more programmatic experience. So um, the, let me see it page um, in our grant guidelines. Let me tell you this specific page, Karen. Page eight in our guidelines has a little bit more information about our adjudicators and, and panelist process. And if you have further follow-up questions, let me know. Um, Gary, I think I maybe have seen you. Gary um, Gibbs, raise your hand. If you had a question and want to unmute, feel free. Actually, my colleague, Laura, just put it in the chat. She did. Okay, thanks. I'll scroll down. Um, so, Laura, I'll answer your question, and then, Jean, I'll come back up to you. I see you both um, are right in a row there. Um, 
Yes, so Laura's question, our agency is prohibited from programming. Can we use this for a re-granting? We have a program that supports this type of activity. Yes, this grant, um, these, this, our grant program does consider that some state arts agencies might want to re-grant. And if that's the case, we do, there is an expectation that the state arts agency will be very much in the sort of position of managing the, the process and upholding those creative aging best practices. It is in our grant guidelines, and I'm just trying to remember exactly the page in terms of uh, page five. This would be under our allowable expenses. So grant awards for creative aging residencies um, or similar activities consistent with the intent of our grant program. The state arts agencies must be the ones that make award determinations for regranting and adjudication may not be delegated to a third party. So if you have further questions about that, let me know about that. Jean asking, can you point toward any specific ex existing successful programs that are good case studies? That's a great question. Um, and we are really, really happy to share with you that Lifetime Arts, which you, some of you may be really familiar with, is what we're calling sort of our preferred or recommended partner for those of you who are considering activities that might include training teaching artists or other things. Lifetime Arts um, is a great provider for that. And they have a wonderful new resource called Creative Aging Resources. I think it's creativeagingresources.org. Um, where there are good, uh, I think there are some case studies there and sort of some ideas about what best practices look like in action for both in-person and online virtual creative aging programming. So I would say check that out. And in the guidelines, as well as on NASA's website, there are a handful of resources also that will um, give you a sense of what some successful case studies might be. And I'll just let you know in our Grant guidelines, you'll find more about that. I think it's on page five. Yeah, check out page five for case studies or, or resources. It appears Michael Faison asked that there will be up to 41 grants awarded. That is correct. Up to 25 awards at the $20,000 level and up to 16 at the $60,000 level. So yes, up to 41 grants awarded, correct. Stephanie Haynes, if we apply for $60,000 but we don't receive, is there any chance that we would be recommended for the $20,000 grant instead by the panel or staff? That's a really good question, Stephanie. Um, I don't, I think I need to take a minute to reflect with Kelly Barsdade and, and others on our staff before I answer that definitively. Um, but thanks for the question and we'll circle back about that. Um, I don't want to tell you the wrong thing, so we'll, we'll put a pin on that and come back to that question. Jamie Dunlop, you're asking, are there state agencies allowed to put funds into our administrative budget so that we can contract out some services? Um, that's another question I don't know the answer to, but I'll put a pin in that and come back to it. Christine. Can I talk about how the sustainability of these programs may be taken into consideration? Very good question. And I think that the best way to answer that is to refer you to the criteria on page um, eight and nine. The creative aging opportunity criteria um, one of the bullet points there is that the project that you propose starts or strengthens a foundation for future creative aging efforts. So in terms of um, taking advantage of this opportunity to really seed new creative aging opportunities in your state or really build a foundation, bring more people into the work in a way that you can see it 
sustaining longer than, than, than this particular grant opportunity might allow is definitely recommended and I think will allow you to, to score higher points if you're thinking in terms of building a project design with that sustainability sort of future vision in mind for life of the, of the activities beyond this grant program. I hope that's helpful and, and please keep in touch if, if you need more details about that. Can state arts agencies partner together on part of their project where aspects of the project would be state focused and other aspects would be undertaken as a multi-state region or a regional conference? And if so, how would you advise they present that application? What a fantastic question, Lisa Burke McCoy, such amazing thinking. Um, that's sort of the first time that I, that's been brought up. So um, again, we'll take that back and sort of hash that out a little bit and, and come back with a bit more guidance, but um, it's really, really good thinking. Thanks for your patience. We're, we're also learning as we go here. So um, we'll come back to you about that question. Michael Faison, yes, statutory limitations on soliciting funds. I have more follow-up information for you about your question. So let us for sure follow up one-on-one -on -one so that I can answer that question. I know what you're talking about and, and we'll work that out together. Um, and let's see, you guys are really keeping me on my toes here. So thanks for posting all these questions in chat. I don't wanna miss any. I think the next one is from Laura Wiegand in Texas about a bullet in the guidelines about prohibited activities that seems to say that this funding cannot support health related activities. Yes. Super important. So um, let's go ahead and find that on page five. The bullet number two under unallowable activities and expenses is um, unallowable would be services designed primarily as health interventions using art for therapeutic purposes to treat cognitive or physical diagnoses. Um, the way that I would encourage you to interpret this is, is to lean heavily on those creative aging best practices of sequential skill-based arts instruction that allows older adults who are, who are the primary project beneficiaries to improve their artistic skills. That's the primary focus of the program. That, and also that allows older adults participants to cultivate meaningful social engagement. So those, those things, like it's really about art instruction, it's about building creative and artistic skills in a sequential learning um, kind of system and to provide meaningful social engagement opportunities. It's not that like, you know, a dance class, Laura uses the example, a program that involves Parkinson's patients with dance classes. It's not that that wouldn't be allowable. It's that the, the sort of focus of that program should be about those participants really building their dance skills and having social engagement time as opposed to treating Parkinson's, treating the, the um, symptoms and issues around Parkinson's. I hope that helps, um, but it really, I just wanna encourage you again to, to lean on those creative aging best practices that are in the guidelines and also part of the resources that we've shared. Lifetime Arts does an amazing job outlining what their programmatic activities are that really uplift those best practices. And that's a good, good guidance when you're thinking about that piece. Um, Karen asks again about Anne Basting, who is named a MacArthur Fellow for her work, as she's doing some amazing work through her nonprofit Time Slips in Milwaukee. Am I safe to assume that you'd be fine with us working with her rather than or in addition to Lifetime Arts? Yeah, so let me just say that it is not by any means mandatory that any state arts agency work with Lifetime Arts. Um, we really lift them up and recommend them because they are experts in this field and because they're doing 
work um, along the lines of those best practices that we agree are best practices and that Aroha agrees are best practices. But that doesn't mean that it can only be lifetime arts that you might partner with. I would just say that if there are local or other national partners who have expertise in creative aging that you wish to, to partner with, um, make sure that your program design is really emphasizing those creative aging best practices. I know of Ann Basting's work um, and it's fantastic, um, but I would say make sure that your program design is emphasizing those best practices. Gary is asking, how long is sequential instruction supposed to last? That's a little bit up for grabs. I think that, um, you know, I think it's, there are recommendations that are made about the minimum number, but in, in the world that we're all living with, with virtual online delivery, that can be different. So there, it, I would say that um, there's no, specific amount of times that se sequential instruction is supposed to last, but that that is part of the design. Um, it will look different if it's an in-person model versus an online model. And one of the really nice things about the timing of this grant program in the world that we're living in is that Lifetime Arts and others have been able to develop some really successful online program models that you can um, have a look at and just determine what might work in your circumstances. Particularly, I wanna point you towards, on NASA's website, uh, our YouTube channel, we have a creative aging webinar that Lifetime Arts delivered during our, our Mid-Atlantic Teaching Artist Residency, and they go into some detail there about how, they're, how they modified their virtual online instruction for older adults, and, and you'll find some useful information there about the sequential instruction part. If you have questions about where to find that, I can, I can follow up for sure. Cassie is asking, can I clarify eligibility at the $60,000 level? We have an arts and health program that has a creative aging component and that you've had lifetime arts training in your state. Great. Um, so yes, so $60,000, that tier, I'm, I'm gonna again refer to the grant guidelines on page three. Um, funding in the $60,000 tier will be available to state arts agencies with larger senior populations, more challenging geography, or plans to further develop established creative aging initiatives. So those are sort of the three considerations if you are thinking about coming in at the $60,000 tier. And um, just to state it, because it is important, I think, all state arts agencies are eligible to apply at, this, at the $20,000 tier, but if you have questions about whether you might apply at the $60,000 tier, the best thing is just to reach out to me one-to-one -one and we can talk through what you have in mind and, and I can give you some guidance about that. Um, Jamie is wondering about for the budget, is in-kind acceptable? I know it's no match, but just wondering if that's eligible. Um, we definitely, on our project budget form, uh, we do have a line item for you to share in-kind um, income. But it, it's really there for you to show sort of the full breadth of what your program entails. Really, you're gonna wanna build a budget that's $20,000 or $60,000 and that your expenses should really sort of match the $20,000 or the $60,000 should balance to that. If you're showing us that you have additional in-kind income or additional money at the federal or state level that's coming in, um, that's great and we're happy to see that. It's really more that we would like to see that information just to build our knowledge but it won't be like, it won't count for or against an application if there's in-kind, if there's line item, you know, filled in in your budget for in-kind um, contribution or additional cash income um, either. I hope that helps. Yes, okay, great. Um, Eric, thank you so much for, for popping into the chat, the YouTube 
that I mentioned the new opportunities for creative aging web seminar that happened. Um, okay, I feel like I've been just talking at you guys and you've been very patient, but let me see if anybody wants to unmute themselves and chime in. All right. Well, um, as I said, this this web briefing, this brief web web briefing, um, is can, is recorded. So I'll be able to put that up on NASA's YouTube channel and share that out with everybody by the end of this week. Um, Jean, thanks for your question. To follow up on office hours, I'm I'm in Eastern time. The dates of those office hours will be Mondays, November 16, 23, 30, December 7th, and it'll be the same time, 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern. The idea, the gist there is just drop in. There's no need to make an appointment or anything. Just, just drop in. We can have some one-on-one um, -on -one or small group conversation depending on who shows up. and. Um, if that's not doable, email me and we can set up some time, just a phone call at any time to talk through anything from how do I submit the application materials to bouncing ideas about project ideas. So really consider me your resource for anything and everything to do technically or conceptually with, with this grant program. Suzanne, thank you for the compliment of my papers.com readers. Appreciate it. Um, what else? Anybody? Susan, a question occurs to me. Um, I saw that uh, you or someone at NASA would be willing to read drafts. Is there a date by which you'd like to have a draft if you're going to give it a read? Yes, that's a really thoughtful question, Christine. Why don't we say December 1st? And I'll write that down so I remember it too. Susan, it's Danny from Louisiana. Danny. And uh, we have an ongoing pro program that we've already put funding into and we're hoping to expand it with, these, with additional funding and hopefully from this. Would we be able to leverage these funds kind of sort of to kickstart or to continue the expansion of it, of, of the program that we've already got in place? Very much so. And that's one of the hopes that, that we'll see some of the great work that, that you all are already doing, that folks are already doing, and really, you know, bringing it to the next level. So by all means, and that would be something that, you know, one-on-one, -on -one if you wanted to get in touch and share your thoughts. We could talk about make sure that that's eligible at the sixty thousand dollar tier, but it I would imagine that it would be. Okay. Thank you, Susan. You bet. Um, Lisa's asking about the dates, and Eric, could I just rely on you to put into the chat? Um, it's Mondays, November sixteenth, twenty third, and thirty and December 7th, uh, four o'clock to five o'clock Eastern time. That's the office hours. Thank you. Well, we're really, 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 really excited. Um, and Aroha Philanthropies is also so excited. And um, I do want to just remind everybody that in our process of coming up with these grant guidelines and this opportunity, your voices very much have been taken to, into account. We, NASA, um, over the last year and a half, almost two years, has done a survey, a field survey, and also a focus group. 
And we really couldn't have designed this grant opportunity without your very, very important input. So we've taken that to heart and we hope that what is um, available here will truly be something to help the 41 state arts agencies that receive this award um, move the creative aging issue area forward in meaningful ways. Um, Michelle is asking about the independent evaluation. Yes, that's a great question. What's it about? How does it work? When, what, et cetera? Um, you know, we want to make sure that one of the ways that we're making sure that this, this program is, it has an eye towards sustainability and ongoing benefit is that we capture all the great learning that will happen out in the field once the activities are underway. So we want to encourage our, the folks who receive the awards, the art agencies that receive these awards, to be active participants in you know, qualitative data that we'll collect, certainly quantitative, like how many program participants and these sort of things. But really, we are well aware that, um, especially at these amounts for $20,000 and $60,000, like, we don't want to burden state arts agencies with like a whole lot of um, surveying and analysis and evaluation. So we want to capture the right amount of information about how your programs are going, how you've thought about designing them. Um, we don't at this moment have all of our inquiry questions lined up, but we're, we're moving into that process really soon. So we'll want to invite you all to participate, like I said, in sort of a midpoint progress report, as well as a final report. We also want to, we are also anticipating that there will be a handful of like grantee cohort webinars along the way. So that, that not only can we collect data and understand how things are going out in the field, but that you all will have a sort of cohort of folks involved in creative aging activities at the same time that can share knowledge um, across what you're doing. So Michelle, I don't have super specifics to answer your question, but I, I wanna say that it will be the right amount of evaluation and not an, an overboard amount um, and more information to follow. Um, and that reminds me too, that another component of, of the leveraging state arts agency investments in creative aging partnership that NASA has with Araha Philanthropies, in addition to these direct grants, is our Creative Aging Institute, which we um, anticipate will happen in July 2021 and July 2022. So we'll do two years of that. And that is going to be open to all state arts agencies, regardless of whether or not you've received a grant, um, because we do want to extend the learning that happens from our grantees out across all of the state arts agencies. Very likely, we'll want to invite grantees to be presenters or participants in some important way during that Creative Aging Institute. And, um, and just really, really be mindful of capitalizing on this opportunity to, to help move the field forward in this issue area. Very good, okay, well I see, um, The chat has sort of slowed down a bit. And Laura, great question. What if COVID is still a barrier to participation? Very thoughtful question, particularly for this population. Um, we are in, uh, anticipating and excited to think about the ways that online and virtual project proposals um, will help answer that question. So I would say have a look at some of those resources I mentioned from Lifetime Arts about how they're doing online programming even now. And if that inspires you, great. Um, but I would say, even if it's not about COVID, even, even, if, um, even if the issue is how can you reach geographically uh, sort of more remote populations of older adults in your state, you know, online programming and best practices 
specifically regarding this population, it's a great question to ask and will be really relevant to everybody's proposal, I would imagine. I don't want to um, shortchange anybody's time here because we did plan to go to 530 and I am happy to sit here and answer and talk uh, creative aging all day, but do feel free if you feel like you've, you've got enough to, to sign off. And again, hit me up via email if you wanna continue the conversation that way. Thanks everybody, I'm seeing some folks signing off, so thanks. And if you wanna stick around, I'll wait until everybody's um, signed off. Lisa, I do see your question. At this time of state budget uncertainty, it might be difficult to demonstrate sustainability. Do I have any advice to offer about that? Um, you know, I think that to the extent that it makes sense for, for your state arts agencies to use this grant, whether it's $20,000 or $60,000, to build partnerships that might not be about direct service programs, but just that sort of introduce you or get you in, involved in statewide networks that serve older populations. I think that that's a really good lead for how to build a sustainable project proposal. And, and you might consider ways that are um, about relationship building in your state as a way to proceed. Hope that's helpful. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and sign off then. I'm seeing no more questions and folks signing off. So much appreciated. Nice to see everybody's face. And we'll post this up to uh, the YouTube channel by the end of the week. <laughs>